Let's have a look at some of our images and what we check prior to the surgery as part of our preoperative planning and when we look at the preoperative diagnostics. So what you can see from these x-rays, for example, is that the size of the interlaminar window is widest at the level L5S1. And going up cranially, the size of the interlaminar window significantly decreases. This works the other way around for the foramen. So conversely, the size of the foramen decreases when you're going from cranially to caudally. And this is why you will find it easier, especially for beginners and beginners cases, uh, for the transraminal technique that you start at the level L3-4, for example, whereas it's much easier for L5-S1 to start as a starting case uh, when you start working uh, with the interlaminar technique. So L5-S1 would be really the best level to start with for beginners. In the majority of cases, the interlaminar window is already significantly smaller at the level L4-5 in comparison to the level L5-S1. Therefore, for beginners, I really recommend stay with L5-S1 for a while before you continue going up to upper levels uh, of the lumbar spine. Later on, when you feel more comfortable and when you feel more experienced, then you can still go to the upper levels L4-5 or L3-4. So to cut a long story short, what is the perfect beginner's case? This is a question which I'm repeatedly being asked. The perfect beginner's case is a fresh, soft disc herniation, so rather acute at the level of the disc base, maybe not a sequestration cranially or caudally, preferably at the level of the disc base, at the level L5-S1 where you have very wide interlaminar window. This is what I would recommend for you, such a case that you can see here as your first beginner's case for, let's say, the first five or ten cases. Just some more anatomic considerations as part of our preoperative planning. What else do we check uh, prior to the surgery? In the AP view, we look at the size of the interlaminar window at the targeted level. This interlaminar window is often asymmetric and it may vary significantly uh, when you look at it between the left side and the right side, even at the right at the same level. So if you address a disc herniation, which is sequestrated, then the interlaminar window may still be quite comfortable when it's a caudal sequestration in the caudal area because of this butterfly shape of the interlaminar window where it's already significantly smaller when you're going up and maybe if you have a cranial sequester. So that would be something to check before the surgery and maybe if you're not yet used to working with the endoscopic high-speed burrs. What else should we check prior to surgery? Is there perhaps a tilting at one level uh, or at the level which you are targeting? Or is there perhaps an additional rotation? In those cases, we would rather prefer to come from the convex side, for example, in an over-the-top decompression. And this is for a number of reasons. Because of the rotation, it will make it easier for you to go over the top to the contralateral side. This is also because it will help you to preserve the facet joint on the contralateral side. And this, again, is very important because in cases of tilting, for example, the segment is particularly resting on this facet joint of the contralateral side. So in the mid and in the long term for the patient, this is very important because it will help you to preserve this particular segment's stability. In the lateral view, prior to our surgery, as part of our preoperative planning, we check for any potential instabilities these instabilities may be associated with increased intraspinal adhesions and possibly scar tissue formations. Synovial facet joints, for example, they can be very easy, but they can be very demanding as they may be associated with severe adhesions, especially after an extended period of conservative therapy with repeated injections and all kinds of conservative therapy. 
So that's something that needs to be checked and therefore I would recommend to address pathologies such as synovial facet joint cysts maybe a little bit later in your learning curve. And also when you are trying to address a disc herniation, if you have a sequester in the axilla, maybe rather also do this at later stages of your learning curve. But I will also get back to this at a later stage.